Welcome back to another how-to episode from M-Wave where we'll be showing you how to install an all-in-one liquid cooler into an LJ1200 motherboard socket. For this tutorial, we'll be using a 240mm cooler and the motherboard is a Z590 and I'll list all the products down below so you can find out more. That being said, let's jump into it. An all-in-one cooler will come with pretty much all the parts that you do see here or something very similar to this. So everything that's been taken out of the bag will one way or another be used if it's connecting the fans to the radiator, radiator to the case or the water block to the motherboard. If you are having any trouble identifying which parts you do need for your specific socket, then do check the manual, okay? Now, first things first, let's identify where we wanna mount this radiator. In this specific case, we do have two options for mounting. So we can go at the top or at the front of the case. I'm gonna to choose to use the top section as there is a perfect gap for this 240 mm radiator. I'm gonna use these excess fans just at the front of the case to complete the airflow through the whole system. With the orientation chosen, it is important to mount our fans next. Two tips for replacing the fans on the radiator. So I am gonna place it at the bottom and work through a push configuration. So do make sure that the exhaust side of the fan is facing the radiator. Now also with these RGB fans, do make sure that the cabling will be at the back of the case as you don't want it hanging down once the radiator is installed. Our radiator is all prepped. However, we do need to attach these little side brackets to our water block here. This can be done a little bit later on. However, while it's outside the case, it can put a little bit less pressure on the tubing. Quite easy to uh, install. They just go on opposite ends and just take two screws to secure. Just remove any covers or dust filters from the top and then carefully balance the radiator and try and line it up with the screw holes in the top of the case. Then just use the provided washers and screws to secure it into place. Um, now, if you are missing anything, just remember that everything required for the installation is provided. So maybe just double check your box and make sure you haven't left out a bag. Just feed any cables which might be dangling through to the back just to tidy up the workspace. Up next, we'll be connecting our back plate. Now this will sit on the back of the motherboard and secure the water block to the CPU. This is where the biggest variance will be in different type of all-in-one coolers. So if yours doesn't quite look like this, do check the manual. However, the process will be very similar. At the back of the motherboard, you can quite easily see these four holes here for Intel CPUs. These are what we want to use to secure the back plate and just push our existing screws straight through, just like that. And then we jump back to the front. The back plate will balance itself in the motherboard. However, it's nice to just hold with one hand and use these four washers, just secure it into place. Keep in mind, one side of the washer is a little bit smaller and will give a tighter grip on the screw. That's the side we wanna feed in first. Before we do connect our water block, there is one more thing that we must do. That's make sure that there's some thermal paste on our CPU. Some coolers will have pre-applied thermal paste on the water block. If they don't, they will come with thermal paste included in the packaging. Once we put the water block on the CPU, the thermal paste will start to spread and we want it to spread evenly. So once it's on, just apply pressure to it while connecting these four screws to secure it into place. That's it for the installation. The final thing for us to do is to connect all these dangling cables from the water block and the fans. It is very important that we use the correct headers on the motherboard and the placement of these headers will change depending on the motherboard you're using at home. With your cooler, you would have received a fan splitter. This is used to connect the fans on the radiator to the CPU header on the motherboard. If your cooler has any RGB like our one does, you would have received an RGB splitter. Exactly the same as the fans, connect all the RGB connections into the male ends on the splitter and the female end goes into an ARGB connection on the motherboard. Lastly, the three pin connection on the pump needs to go into the AIO pump connection on the motherboard. Sometimes it is shared with a system fan. Identify it using the manual and plug it in. 
As I did mention, I will reconnect those front three fans just to complete the airflow through the system. But that's it for the all-in-one cooler installation. If the components you are using were a little bit different and you have any questions about anything we've gone through today, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to help you out. As always, thanks for watching.